The Verzik boss fight actually starts before you enter the room. Someone from your team must pick up the staff so that everyone can use it to take down her shields during phase 1. One person on the team may opt to bring an anglerfish to eat before picking up the staff, otherwise drop a brew so that you have an inventory space open. If you are new to fighting Verzik, the first thing you should do is drop half of your brews and restores in case you die, so your team has a better chance of finishing the fight. As you become more confident in your ability to survive, keep more supplies on you. Even at higher kill count, you should always drop one brew and one restore in case of a disconnect or other unfortunate circumstance. Before we begin, I'll go over the tiles that you should have marked for each part of the fight. The orange one that I have marked here is for the webs on phase 3, which I will go over later. The first safe spots that I'll go over is going to be the pillar safe spots. Here we're standing at pillar number 1, and the safe spot that everybody uses is directly in the middle. Anything diagonally southwest of this position is also safe while the pillar is still standing. The gem on the floor is not a safe spot and should be avoided. Pillar number 2 has the same safe spots, and this will be on the eastern side of the room. Pillar number 3 has a safe spot directly in the middle of the pillar on the eastern side. If you step one square north, it is not a safe spot, and the entire southern side of this pillar is a safe spot as well. If you have to go all the way to pillar 4, then it is the same thing as the eastern side, but the safe spot is on the west side of the pillar this time. Finally, if you do end up needing the fifth and sixth pillar, they are on just the south side of the pillar, and you have no other safe spots here, so it is quite a long run to be able to use the staff. It is identical on the eastern side. For phase two, I will have these four squares marked. Each one of these squares is where one person will attack Verzik from on phase two. A map of all of these safe spots will be available in the description so that you can mark these on your own. The beginning of phase one starts after one person on the team talks to Verzik. This phase consists of the team destroying her shield with the staff while she launches powerful magical attacks at you. Once her shield is broken, she will hop off the throne and chains will take her to the middle where phase 2 will begin. The convention for using the staff is to always go in orb order, which I have displayed here. My teammate, whose name starts with D, is first, so he will start the fight. Here, I am third, so I will pick up the staff after the second person, spec twice, and drop it to the fourth person if there was one, and so on. Once the last player in the orb order goes, it wraps back around to the first person. If you are not first in orb order, start by spam clicking Verzik until your first attack hits. You can stay at Verzik until your fourth whip hit or third scythe hit. I am the second person to receive the staff, so after my second hit, I start clicking the ground where I expect the staff to come up. Immediately run next to the western pillar and equip the staff on the way back, and selecting the special attack bar or orb. Hit her with two special attacks, and then run to the pillar safe spot while equipping your whip or scythe. Drop the staff as soon as possible for the third person to pick it up. After you have finished specking with the staff, you will need to watch Verzik to decide when it is safe to attack. There are two major indicators of when to attack. The first one is to watch your hands and wait for her to clap. If you click to attack just as her hands clap, you will be able to safely get two whip or scythe hits in before needing to run back to the safe spot. Another thing to watch is her legs. When her legs reach their widest, it is safe to attack and get two hits with either weapon. Here, we can more easily see exactly when to click based on her animations. If you watch the hands, I click directly before her hands meet, which is the earliest possible time to attack. I will have 1.8 seconds after my second whip hit to click back on the safe spot behind the pillar, or 1.2 seconds after the second scythe hit. I can also click her as her hands meet, but then I have less time to get back to the pillar. Let's watch this again, but focusing on her legs now. Just before they reach their widest, I can click to attack and I'll be able to get two hits in before needing to run back. Choose your favorite method and always wait for these cues to run out from any safe spot during phase one to avoid all damage. I personally choose to watch the legs because they're a much larger target to look at. Continue to attack Verzik at each opportunity while keeping track of who is next for the staff. Here. The third person has it, and they're passing it to the fourth. Now the fourth person will spec, and after that it will wrap back around to the first person. Each person will need to spec a total of three times with the staff. Two specs will happen when you first pick up the staff, and then the third spec should be ready to go after one full rotation.
We will continue to do this until the pillar falls. As you can see, the health is getting low, and on the next hit is going to fall. So we all run up to attack Verzik, and we're making sure to not be next to the pillar, because as it falls, you'll take 70 damage. You can get two hits in and just run to the next pillar. We do the exact same thing here, but we're using the eastern pillar as a safe spot now. One thing that I'd like to mention here is to note where I'm clicking on the pillar to return to the safe spot. If my teammate drops the staff on the safe spot, I might click to pick it up by accident. If someone else picks it up while I'm still not in the safe spot, my character will stop and be in danger of being hit by the magic attack. Always click on the front edge of the pillar to avoid this. After Verzik's shield is destroyed, she will hop off her throne and phase 2 will begin. All pillars will fall, so make sure to run away from the pillars once the health bar hits 0% or you'll risk getting hit for 60 damage. Activate your ranged and piety prayers while you make your way to any of the marked phase 2 squares. Before we get started on phase 2, I'll show you how to use the staff if you're the person starting the fight. Always start the fight with the staff equipped and the spec bar highlighted. Use the spacebar and the 1 key to start the fight and immediately spec Verzik. Launch one more special at her, equip your weapon, and drop the staff as fast as possible. The second person will pick up the staff and you'll do two hits with whatever weapon you have if you didn't waste any time. If you felt slow, only get one hit and then run to the safe spot. Here's the same clip again, but this time at full speed. In this clip, I am using Piety, but I wouldn't recommend doing that to save prayer until you're more comfortable with the boss. Phase 2 Verzik is probably the hardest part of the theater to survive. If you and your team manage to make it past this phase, you're very likely to finish the Theater of Blood. There are five main attacks that Verzik will do throughout the phase. The most common one is the ranged attack, or the cabbages, that she throws every 2.4 seconds. These hit up to 50 off prayer and the damage is halved with range prayer on. The most important part of phase 2 is learning how to dodge this attack successfully. She will also launch lightning approximately every 5 ranged attacks, spawn crabs every 45 seconds, and she will bounce and stun you if you stand too close to her. The fifth attack that she will use will only occur after you bring her down to 35% health. This attack is a mage attack that hits hard and drains your prayer if you're not praying against it. Fortunately, if you master phase 2, you should take no more than 25 damage throughout the entire 3-5 to five minutes that it takes to complete. So, let's learn a little bit more about each attack. First, I'll go over getting bounced by Verzik. This occurs when you're standing directly next to her as she's about to throw an attack. Instead of throwing an attack, she will bounce you away and stun you for a short time. The max hit of this bounce is 45, but it often does no damage. The real damage comes from the unavoidable ranged attack afterwards. To avoid getting bounced, always stand one square away from her until she throws her attack. In this clip here, I attacked too early and was next to her when she was going to throw an attack, so I got bounced and damaged pretty badly. After I got bounced, my first move should have been to drink a brew, because it's not possible to move out of the way of the ranged attack. When you are able to move again, move one square away from Verzik and get back into the cycle. The next attack that I'll explain is the crab spawning. These will happen within the first 5 attacks of phase 2, and will occur about once every 45 seconds afterwards until Verzik is at 35%. To explain how popping a crab works, I've made this image. If you're standing on top of the crab when it explodes, you will take 63 damage. The damage scales down as you get farther away. To pop a crab, you need to go within one of the squares that would deal damage and then run away from it before it actually explodes. Here I am two squares away from the center, so I should take 8 damage if I don't move. Ideally, I would wait until the crab is two squares away from me and then run to this X that I have marked, which would put me firmly out of the blast radius. The first thing to note is the purple blob that she sends out. It will always aim for one person, and that person simply needs to move off the square to not take damage. Each crab will target one player, and in this clip there were no crabs that targeted me. In this case, the only way a crab will target me is if I walk under it. I tried to help my teammate by attacking the gray crab, and any damage that I do will reduce the explosion damage, and killing it will negate all of the damage. Additionally, if the purple crab spawn on your side, it is your job to do poison damage to the crab to kill it. A serp helm or an abyssal tentacle will cause poison damage. Here we have a clip where two crabs targeted me from opposite directions. 
I make a bad decision and run towards the throne where I am trapped, so I am forced to take some damage from the blue crab. After the blue crab is popped, I am able to safely pop the gray crab and take no damage. In this next clip, I notice that the lightning has targeted me, so I need to stay near my teammates while also popping this crab. I patiently wait for the crab to come to me, wait for the lightning to bounce, and then run away to take no damage from the crab. In this final crab clip, this player has two crabs on him. He dodges a ranged attack, and then waits for one moment to let the crabs get within range. Right here, both crabs are two tiles away from him, so all he needs to do is run opposite direction of both of them and he will take zero damage. The next attack that we need to go over is Lightning. Lightning is one of the most devastating attacks in P2, but fortunately, it's easily avoidable. Berzik will launch Lightning every five attacks, and she will randomly target one player every time. The Lightning will choose the next person to bounce to randomly, dealing five to ten unavoidable damage every time. It will never bounce to the same person twice. If Lightning needs to travel through Verzik's hitbox to get to the next person, it will dissipate. This cycle continues until there are no more people to pass it to. At that point, it will deal 50 damage to the last person. The key here is that if the Lightning passes through Verzik's hitbox, it will dissipate, dealing damage to her instead of your team. On this next clip, we can see exactly how Lightning travels. This will also explain why two people stand on the east and west side of Verzik instead of one person on each side. Verzik first launched the lightning at Rambo Tanks on the bottom right. Then the lightning travels to Iron IV Dude, who had an unfortunate misstep two squares north of Verzik. This allowed the lightning to travel around Verzik instead of through her. And then finally, from Drifted's, it hit Asuka for a 47. Had Iron IV Dude stayed in line with Verzik where he should have been, the lightning would have followed the path of the red arrow and done damage to Verzik instead of his team. In this same clip from before, we can now focus on the lightning that Verzik will launch to the player on the right. The lightning goes to player 1, and then bounces to player 2. He recognizes this, and he needs to get closer to Verzik so that it will bounce to the third player. Because the third player is on the opposite side, the lightning hits Verzik and deals zero damage. The next attack is the most common one, the ranged attack. This attack will launch every 2.4 seconds and can be easily avoided. This is a lot like learning when to attack Verzik on phase 1. Just watch for a particular animation and then click to attack at the right time. In this clip, I just want you to focus on Verzik and when I click to dodge the attack. The moment you see her cape go under her ass, you need to click to move or attack her. I recommend you practice this how I am here during your first phase 2. You won't be doing any damage, but the most important thing is to learn the timing as quickly as possible. Messing up the timing will lead to getting bounced, which can lead to some really unfortunate circumstances. Once you have gotten comfortable with dodging her ranged attacks, it's time to do some damage. Always start within two tiles of Verzik, so you may need to skip an attack to get to your normal starting position. If you are using a whip, you should walk in a triangle like I am here. Attack, move back, attack, move back to a different square, attack, move back to the original square. Remember, always click to attack when her cape starts to move and you'll be fine. You'll have to repeat this process until 35% or until the next set of crab spawns like they did here. So I'm avoiding the purple blob, I'm identifying which crabs are on me, and then I'm going to pop this blue one and come back to my original starting square. Always keep your health above 75 if you're a learner, or for the max hit, you could just keep it at 50. Here at 35%, these red crabs will spawn. From this point forward, you should be praying magic to avoid any damage that that red orb causes. Each time these crabs spawn, Verzik will go into a short healing phase where any time you hit her, it will heal her instead. You should be killing the crabs during this phase, bringing them down to 10%. After you've gotten your crab down to 10% health, you should go back onto the boss and slowly deal damage until the next set of crabs spawn. Every time Verzik spawns the red crabs, she will go into her healing phase, and then she will perform 8 attacks which will either be a magic orb that drains your prayer, the ranged attack, or the lightning. After these 8 attacks, the red crabs will burst, and any remaining hit points will be used to heal Verzik. Keep in mind that the ranged attack is going to continue to occur, and this time you're not praying ranged, so it will deal the full 50 damage. 
Keep dodging as you were previously while dealing damage until the end of phase 2. If one player dies before phase 2 is completed, it is helpful for one person to switch to the blowpipe and kill both crabs. The other two people should hit their crab twice during the healing phase and then get back to dealing damage on Verzik. Once your team has brought Verzik's HP down to 0%, the third and final phase will begin. This phase, Verzik turns into a spider and can freely move around the room. She will pick one person that is tanking and focus them until either they die or they stay out of her melee range for three consecutive attacks. Verzik has her standard auto attacks, which come in the form of ranged or mage, and then she has four special attacks that happen in a repeating cycle. The first special attack is summoning Nilocus, exactly the same as phase two. This time, anyone who is not tanking should freeze the crabs before they make it to the tank. The second special attack is webs. She will target players randomly and spray webs in a cluster around that person. If anyone steps on these webs, they will be stuck there and take up to 45 damage unless a teammate frees them by destroying the web. The third special is the yellow pools. Verzik will stop attacking and one yellow pool will appear for each member of the team to stand on. She will launch a green orb which deals between 60 and 80 damage if you are not standing on the pool and will deal zero damage if you are standing on the pool. The final special attack is the green bomb. This will deal 75 damage to one person unless the bounce between teammates three times. Normally, one person will just stay above 75 HP and eat the damage so the DPS of the rest of the team can stay constant. Finally, once Verzik reaches 20% health, the purple tornadoes spawn. These are specific to each player and will follow the player around at walking speed until it catches them. If it does catch you, Verzik will be healed a significant amount and your HP will be halved. A technique to avoid this purple tornado while still doing damage to Verzik is to hit her on one of each of her corners while the tank drags her around the rest of the room. Once you have high enough HP, use your dragon claw specs or crystal hybrid specs to finish this part of the fight as quickly as possible. Something important that I'd like to explain before going through an entire phase 3 is how to tank Verzik. First, Verzik has chosen me as the tank. There are advanced strategies to tanking Verzik, but the most important thing you need to know is that you should never be in melee range when she's about to throw her attack. If you are, she will melee your entire team and deal up to 60 damage per person. Tanking is the single most important aspect of Phase 3. A bad tank will likely wipe the team. Fortunately, tanking is fairly easy to avoid the melee attack. All you need to do is attack Verzik and right click to walk under her. You should wait under her until she launches an auto attack, and then you click to attack again. It is essential that you do not attack her earlier than she attacks you, as this will likely result in a melee hitting your team. If you want Verzik to choose a different tank, you can run to the edge of the room and stay out of her melee distance for three consecutive auto attacks. Now that we have a good idea of what to expect, I'll let this play the whole way through the rest of the phase three, explaining things as we go. For the auto attacks that she's throwing, prayer will reduce the damage by 50% and you can change your prayer after the attack is launched. The animation for the mage attack is bright blue, and the ranged attack is a green spike. The next special attack is webs, which is indicated by Verzik walking to the middle of the room. I'm going to run around the room clockwise with my staff equipped to help free any teammates who may get stuck on a web. During this phase, quite a lot of damage can be done, but in this case it went pretty poorly. The only person who was able to keep damage output was Oh Jesus over here on the right. At the end of the video, I will show you what proper web running looks like. After webs, we can start counting auto attacks to know when the spe next special attack will happen. So far that's two. Now we have three. Now we have our fourth auto attack, and the next thing that she will do is spawn yellow pools right now. A good team will be able to bring Verzik down to just above 20% before the yellow pools occur. You always want to wait at around 25% before the yellow pools, so that you don't spawn the tornadoes at the same time. Once you are safely on a pool, heal to full HP in preparation for the green ball. Wait for the shield to form around you, and then begin attacking Verzik again. My team here spawned purples immediately after yellows because we had done so much damage prior. You should then get ready for the green ball, keep your health above 75%, and use both of your claw specs on Verzik, hopefully finishing the fight. If not, the special attacks will continue to occur in cycle. Before I conclude this guide, I want to show two advanced strategies that are easy to learn. First, 
Using the scythe on phase 2 Verzik requires a specific technique. If you want to rely on animation, watch the ranged attack explosion behind me. As soon as it explodes, I click on it and then click back on Verzik. If you stop on the back square, you didn't click back on Verzik fast enough. Additionally, you should always click on Verzik's shadow and not anywhere else because if you click on somewhere else, it's potential that you can miss and that will result in you walking under Verzik taking massive damage. I want to show properly running the webs, because this is essentially free damage during the fight if done properly. We all meet on this center tile and spam click Verzik until our weapon swings. Wait one tick, and then click parallel to the next side you want to go to, while rotating your camera to face Verzik every time. Once your character rounds the corner, you want to attack Verzik so you stop in the middle of each side. Continue to click parallel to the next side, rotate your camera, and attack Verzik in this fashion until either you make a mistake or you finish on the south side after one and a half rotations. In this clip, I show running off to the side safely. If you find you are behind your teammates, you will want to run perpendicular to the boss so that you don't accidentally spread the webs in front of your teammates. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed and learned a lot from the guide.